are listening to Julia's Trucking Cafe News Hour. Welcome to Julia's Trucking Cafe Trucking News Hour. I hope you have a really good weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I have lots of news to get to, so let's get right to it. In our first story, a truck driver leads Idaho police on a high-speed chase in a semi-truck before being arrested. Actually, I misspoke. He's not really a truck driver. You'll find out here in a minute. On June 8th at 1017 in the evening, Idaho State Police received a report that Joseph J. Castillo, 25, of Crowley, Louisiana, was unlawfully in possession of a 2016 Peterbilt. Castillo was reported to be driving the semi without the owner's consent, northbound on Interstate 15 near Arimo in eastern Idaho. It's A-R-I-M-O. Idaho police attempted to conduct a traffic stop near the income port of entry, but Castillo failed to stop. He continued to drive at 80 miles an hour, fleeing from the police. He allegedly passed another truck unsafely, then continued on to Interstate 86 toward American Falls. Police deployed spike strips to deflate the tires, stopping Castillo on westbound Interstate 86 around milepost 38. He exited the vehicle and continued to flee on foot through a field. After a short foot pursuit, police took Castillo into custody. He is charged with felony eluding operating a vehicle without the owner's consent, resist and obstruct, DUI, open container, possession of a firearm while being under the influence. Yeah, buddy, you're going away for a little bit of time. Idaho State Police, <clears throat> excuse me, um, were assisted by the County Sheriff's Office, Pocatello Police Department, and America Falls Police Department. He's being in, detained in the county jail. And a veteran truck driver was um, blasted with bullets. A truck driver who survived an interstate attack at 70 miles an hour in Ohio says that he's grateful to be alive after his truck took multiple rounds of gunfire. Veteran driver Marcus Summers said he survived being blasted with bullets by an unknown suspect who has yet to be taken into custody. The shooting happened around 11.30 on, um, in Ohio on westbound Interstate 70 near a mile marker 47. The shooting happened around 11.30 at night. Summers said that he was go going about his daily driving routine and traveling, you know, around 70 miles an hour, which is the speed limit, when he, he heard pop, 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 pop of multiple rounds. Unable to tell where the shots were coming from and suddenly covered in glass from his shattered windows, Summers said that he reached for his gun to defend himself and then managed to pull over safely despite the extensive damage that his truck incurred. He was uninjured during this incident. Summer said that he didn't see the shooter during the incident or after he pulled over. He called 911 and then his wife to let her know that he was okay. Said that the police, the responding police officers showed the utmost concern for his safety and extended his thanks for how they treated him during the investigation. Uh, Summer said that police speculated that the weapon could have been a BB gun or pellet gun, but given the amount of damage that his truck sustained, he isn't sure that this is the case. Summer pointed out that the shooting happened as a car passed him while he traveled uh, under an overpass. So it isn't yet clear whether the shooter targeted him from the vehicle or from a higher vantage point. Summers also wondered that there wasn't more than one shooter. When asked whether he believed that the incident was related to the recent uptick in violence due to the protests, Summer said he had no idea and remarked that there's nothing we can do about it. He also mentioned that he flies an American flag on his truck. He says that for the most part, he gets a thumbs up from other drivers for the flag, but that it is possible that someone was offended by it. Like I always say, boo hoo. As a driver who says he's seen it all in my millions of miles, he advises other truckers who find themselves in similar situations to know their surroundings. 
keep calm and composed and to think as clearly as possible remove themselves and their vehicle from this situation safely and also try to get a good look and possibly a tag at a car if it if it is involving another vehicle that's what he forgot to say that's my input on it summers also emphasized the importance of drivers being able to carry for self-defense when we tie our shoes he says and start our trip we never know who will untie them at the end of the day police will review his dash cam video as the this investigation does continue and a tow truck driver crashes into multiple vehicles cameras were rolling when a suspected dui tow truck driver slammed into several parked cars at a laundromat in california the video was reportedly captured in el monte california in the video, you could see a tow truck strike several vehicles in the parking lot of the laundromat. As a tow truck comes to the stop, multiple people approach the truck, throwing objects and breaking out the driver's side window. Police soon arrive on the scene and take the driver into custody. The police department did confirm that the unnamed man behind the wheel of the tow truck was arrested from the scene for various crimes, including drunk driving, hit and run, and driving on a suspended or revoked driver's license. Police also say that they have no information to indicate that the tow truck was stolen. This video is going to be a long video, possibly over an hour, so I'm not going to show this video uh, of what happened with this tow truck. You can watch it uh, at a later date in, that'll be in the show notes in the description below. And motorists pull a truck driver from a fiery wreckage. A truck driver suffered serious injuries but survived after his truck went airborne off a Louisiana interstate and caught fire on the roadway below. This crash occurred on Tuesday, June 9th around 8.30 in the morning near Derry, Louisiana. Police say that 28-year-old Justin A. Richmond was driving a boom truck northbound on Interstate 49. Quote, when for reasons still under investigation, the truck left the roadway on the right side, striking a metal guardrail, then concrete rail going airborne, landing several feet below on the pay portion of Louisiana Highway 119. Travel through metal guardrails there, coming to rest on its side, right side, and catching fire. Motorist Dan Cook of Alexandria and Brandon, uh, I'm sorry Brandon, I cannot pronounce your name, of Church Point and Steve Pierce of Cloydeville said, saw the crash and stopped to pull Richmond from the burning truck. Richmond was airlifted to a nearby hospital. Police say that he suffered serious injuries and burns to more than 50% of his body. No other injuries were reported and the Natchitoches Parish Sheriff's Office said Quote, we applaud the motorists who stopped to assist and aid their fellow man this morning. Each of them stated they would, couldn't watch him burn to death, uh, nor could I. And FMCSA extends historic 50 state hours of service waiver again, but fewer topics will be covered on this go round. As I talked about in previous episodes, the FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, has once again extended an unprecedented national hours of service regulation waiver for drivers hauling some COVID relief supplies. On June 8th, the FMCSA announced that the hours of service waiver set to expire on June 14th would be extended through July 14, 2020. Now it's only extended, like I stated before, to people and drivers hauling livestock, livestock feed, medical supplies and equipment related to testing, diagnosis and treatment of the virus, supplies and equipment necessary for community safety, sanitation and prevention of community transmission, such as masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, soap and disinfectant. Loads of food, fuel, raw materials, including paper, plastic and alcohol, liquefied gases, to be used in refrigeration systems are no longer eligible for this waiver. And in the last episode, I mentioned that rocks were, be, uh, were being reported being thrown at drivers in Pennsylvania. 
Now the state police are investigating. Pennsylvania State Police are investigating an incident in Pike County involving rocks being thrown at trucks. The incident occurred on June 7th, approximately 8.30 at night on Interstate 84, around mile, po uh, mile marker 45. Uh, Pennsylvania State Police say that two trucks were traveling eastbound when their vehicles were struck by rocks that were being thrown. According to one of the drivers, three white males were seen on the side of the road. Two of the men threw rocks. The rocks cracked the driver's windshield and punctured a fuel line. Another truck also sustained damage to its hood. If, if you're in the area, keep an eye out and call the Pennsylvania State Police Blooming Grove Department at 570-226-5718. Again, that's 570-226-5718 if you see anything suspicious. And in two separate incidences, two trucks and trains collided. Luckily, both drivers escaped injury. Two trucks and trains collided yes, uh, the other day, on June 10th. Both truck drivers were able to escape injury. The first collision occurred in Eltopia, Washington. And according to Franklin County Sheriff's Office, the driver was not injured. It is unclear why the truck stopped on the tracks. The second collision occurred in San Jaco County, California on the same day. According to Escalon Police Department, a BNSF train struck a truck that was hauling cattle. Of the 70 cows on the truck, only 10 to 12 survived. The cattle were being transported from Hawaii. A driver of the, that truck was not injured. And remember some time ago when I reported on the Freight Broker Association um, guilty conscience that um, they are saying that the truckers aren't being gouged, price gouged by um, brokers? Well, the president of that association is stepping down. The head of the largest freight broker group in the U.S. will leave the association after more than two decades. On June 10th, the Transportation Intermediaries Association, otherwise known as TIA, announced that Robert Boltman will resign as the organization's president and CEO as the end of September. Boltman joined the TIA as CEO in 1997. Hmm. After all this, Mr. Boltman, guilty conscience, you know, something, what's the matter? After you're being called on the carpet with your association, Trump calls you out, then all of a sudden, oh, I think I'm going to resign to bigger and better things. Hmm, kind of coincidental, isn't it? And a truck driver in this story got caught trying to smuggle two and a half million dollars in marijuana over the Peace Bridge. A truck driver who was hauling goods from Canada and the U.S. was arrested and charged with smuggling $2,500,000 in marijuana. Our sheep, Singhi, was stopped on June 5th when he was crossing the Canadian border. Border agents became suspicious when they found that the trailer didn't have a seal. Quote, the commercial truck was referred to the vehicle and car go inspection system for a non-intrusive x-ray exam which showed inconsistencies between the cargo in the nose of the trailer and the rest of the load. As a result, it was referred to the Peace Bridge Warehouse loading dock for a physical exam. During that exam, officers offloaded the properly identified coffee makers. While searching the trailer, inspection inspectors found four skids that looked different from the rest of the cargo. Inspectors opened the containers on the skids and found coffee grounds. Under the coffee grounds, they found vacuum sealed bags. In total, inspectors recovered 1,608 vacuum sealed bags of suspected marijuana, weighing 1,800 pounds. The driver was arrested and charged with possessing with intent to distribute and importation of marijuana. If convicted, he faces a mandatory penalty of five years in prison or a maximum of 40 years and a fine of $5 million. And in other news, a semi fails to yield and causes crashes into two vehicles 
and also ruptures his fuel tank. On June 9th, a semi-truck hauling wood chips failed to yield to a pair of vehicles stopped on US-23, turning left on the Piper Road in Michigan. Troopers from the Michigan State Police and deputies from the County Sheriff's Office responded. The semi hauling more than 100,000 pounds of wood chips was dri being driven by a 50 year old man from Rose City. Trooper said the semi collided with the first vehicle, causing it to crash into the second vehicle. In order to avoid the collision, the semi truck driver swerved to the right, then back across the yellow lines into a, a ditch. The semi crashed into trees on the side of the road before jackknifing and coming to rest. A ruptured fuel tank caused diesel fuel to spill all over the place, I'm sure. To contain the fuel, booms were deployed in the Department of Environmental Quality, DEA, or I'm sorry, uh, the EPA, was informed of the spill. The hazmat crew from the Alpena uh, Combat Readiness Training Center assisted with the cleanup. They were, crews were on site until 9.15 that night cleaning up diesel spill. Probably all because of inattentive driving like I've been preaching to you about for the last two and a half years. When are y'all going to start listening? They just don't listen. And these are top eight drugs that truckers tested positive for, according to the clearinghouse that opened up back in January. Yeah, now they can track to see exactly what us drivers are getting popped for. I've never popped dirty because I don't do any of that garbage, but it's not no place out here for it. The FMCSA released a detailed report on a substance use violations compiled by their new National Drug and Alcohol Ta Database Task Force. The FMCSA recently released a summary report for the month of May that broke down the data on the types of drugs that were identified in positive CDL holder drug tests that were reported to the clearinghouse. As of June 1st, here are the top eight substances. One, marijuana, 10,388 pop dirty. Cocaine, 3,192 drivers pop dirty. Number three, meth, 2,184 pop dirty. Four, amphetamines, 2,108 pop dirty. Five, oxymorphone, 55 pop dirty. Not morphine, morphone, P-H-O-N-E. Six, oxycodone, 452. In other words, painkiller, 452 pop dirty. Seven, hydrocodone, another painkiller, 418 pop dirty. Eight, hydromorphone, 363 pop dirty. Of that total, 21,156 positive substance use tests. 80% were drug violations as opposed to alcohol. The FMCSA clearinghouse rule went into effect, like I mentioned, back in January. While truck drivers are not required to immediately register, they must be registered in order to respond to an employer's request for consent prior to pre-employment or full inquiry, in other words, once a year. And a man that drove a 40-ton truck over an 8-ton bridge may have stole it. Again, back, at, back to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania say that they arrested a New Jersey man for a variety of violations after he drove an overweight truck over a bridge. Police arrested 50-year-old New Jersey resident Richard C. Smith Jr. in the early morning hours on June 8th in Lower Mount Bethel Township. The incident began when Pennsylvania State Police were dispatched to the Riverton Belvedere Bridge for reports of an overweight truck crossing the bridge. When police arrived on the scene, they determined that Smith had driven an approximately 40-ton truck across that marked 8-ton bridge. Excuse me. In addition to the overweight violation, police also discovered that Smith did not have a CDL. Smith told officers that he had gotten the truck from his wife from a trucking terminal near Philly. Excuse me. Police later learned that Smith is not married and had no reason to be driving the truck and that the semi had been stolen from a truck lot in the Philly area. Authorities also said that he was listed as a missing and endangered person in the database. He now faces felony charges of theft and receiving stolen property in addition to the traffic offenses. And he was not the first person to find himself in hot water for driving a truck over the bridge. 
The last one was in September of 2019 that I reported on. And petition calls for a Minnesota Attorney General to prosecute protesters. A petition is calling for the Minnesota Attorney General, Keith Ellison, to prosecute the protesters for interfering with commerce. The petition was recreated, was created, excuse me, in response to calls for the truck driver um, that Vichero's prosecution, when they said they were still looking into it, that I just reported about in episode 88. And uh, if you didn't listen to that episode or watch that episode, it, uh, his truck was surrounded by protesters. He was pulled from the cab. He suffered cuts to his face and had his wallet and phone stolen. He was protected from, uh, from some protesters by other protesters and were taken into police custody without serious injury or on suspicion of assault. He was later released without charges as the authorities continued to investigate. The highway was scheduled to be barricaded and closed off to traffic, however it wasn't, uh, allowing multiple vehicles, including his truck, to enter the roadway, putting protesters in danger. So he was already on I-94 and he turned on to 35 before they got the barricades up or blocked the trucks from accessing 35. So it's really not his fault. It's the city of Minneapolis' fault for not having the barricades up, you know? So why are you blaming him for and in other news, I'm trying to go through this fast to not have such a long video. High winds hurl a big rig into a ditch in Indiana. A motorist following a semi happened to be filming as severe weather suddenly flipped the truck over, sending it into the ditch in Indiana. The video was captured by Indiana resident Jenny Ressor, Reeser, who writes, first semi flip on 20. I was trying to record the clouds and rain and got this. Video is a quick stop because I called for an ambulance so fast. The second semi was coming toward us and fli flip, then slid into the other one. Both drivers are okay. And at that time, uh, severe storms were ramping through Indiana and will blow a semi truck over. And now let's take a short break drivers we all know what it's like to be at a shippers or receivers and have to wait to be loaded for hours on end am i right especially produce coolers and paper mills that's why you need to be prepared with extra food in your truck my patriot supply helps you stay prepared now it's not what you may be thinking my patriot supply is delicious emergency food they have food kits that are good up to 25 years and they come in a slim light tote that you can easily store in your food pantry or under your bunk. I could speak from experience after living through Hurricane Katrina. We were without power for 10 days, my mother, my son, and I. And if it weren't for the MREs that were flown into us, we wouldn't have had any food. Four 60-foot pine trees broke in half during that storm and landed across my driveway, landlocking me in, so I couldn't get out for food. And there were four-mile gas lines then. That's when my Patriot Supply emergency food would have come in real handy. If I knew then what I know now about my Patriot Supply, I would have definitely had some of this food stockpiled in my pantry. Now for limited time, you could get a one-week food supply in a handy and neat look at ammo can. And they even offer gluten-free food for just under $100. All you have to do to get yours today is go to my website at juliastruckatcafe.com, go along the toolbar, and you'll see the emergency food supply tab. Click on that, scroll down, and click on any of the images that you see to find out more information. You need to be prepared, and it's important to stay well stocked in your truck. You insure your car, you buy health insurance, vision and dental now why not buy food insurance stay prepared for anything that happens get yours today go to julia's truck cafe.com click on the emergency food supply tab and order yours welcome back to julia's truck at cafe truck and news hour in our top story police are puzzled after finding a dead body on top of a semi truck yeah you heard right Colorado police are investigating after discovery of a body on top of a semi-truck. The body was discovered shortly after 6 a.m. in Grand Junction, Colorado. This happened 
oh, right around the 10th or so of uh, June, a worker at United States Postal Service noticed a person on top of the trailer at the facility and called police, thinking that the person might be asleep. When officers arrived, they confirmed that the male on top of the trailer was dead. As police continued to investigate, they learned that the truck driver was traveling to Glenwood Springs from a location in Kansas when he heard a noise as he went under an I-70 overpass in Wheat Ridge. After arriving at Glenwood Springs, the trailer was transferred to another truck, which was driven to the UPS location in Grand Junction, where the man's body was discovered. The incident remains under investigation by the Wheat Ridge Police Department. This is a developing story. And multi, multiple fatalities in Wisconsin following a chain reaction crash. Wisconsin State Patrol is, uh, was asking drivers to plan an alternate route after a serious chain reaction crash occurred in Columbia County. According to Wisconsin State Troopers, a series of crashes began just before 4 a.m. on Friday morning. I-90-9439 at Wisconsin 60 near Lodi when two semi-trucks were involved in a rear-end crash. Just after 5 a.m., troopers say that a straight truck crashed into the previous crash site. Excuse me. In this crash, Columbia County Highway workers suffered serious injuries. Two state troopers were also seriously injured, but both are expected to survive. All three people were transported to the hospital. This is kind of a gruesome picture of the state patrol car, but it, it went from a, oh, let's just say like a size of a charger down to a smart car. So I don't want to, in case any little kids happen to be watching this, I don't want to have that gruesome of a picture on here, but you can look at it in the show notes I will have listed in the description here below. And speed limits are increasing in Arkansas. Transportation officials in Arkansas announced a major speed limit increase for interstates and highways. The Arkansas Highway Dark on it. Sorry, Arkansas Highway Commission approved a plan to increase speed limits on certain roadways starting July 1st. Quote, our rural interstates will go to 75, our urban interstates will go to 65, our rural multi-lane highways, which are four to five lane highways that are designated as interstates will go to 65. We're allowed up to 60 on two lane highways, say the Arkansas DOT spokesperson. The speed limit increases will go into effect as soon as the signs can be changed, which could take a few weeks or months. While some have raised concerns about highway safety with the higher speed limits, these safe facilities are safer these days. We have wired up safety fences. We have rumble strips. We have other safety features. Our vehicles are safer as well. So that has helped. What does that have to do with raising the speed limit? I don't know. And an Illinois trucking company has filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. An Illinois motor carrier that employs several dozen truck drivers has filed for bankruptcy protection after the company was sued for failure to pay their bills. On June 7th, Illinois-based Park Transportation filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the Northern District Court of Illinois. According to the FFCSA's website, Park Transportation operates 98 power units and employs 83 drivers. The bankruptcy filings list Park Transportation's assets at up to $50,000 and there are liabilities at over 1 million to 10 million. Court records say that the bankruptcy comes after Park Transportation was sued by Royal Savings Bank and DCT Cargo LLC for failure to meet financial obligations. Over the past 24 months, Park Transportation trucks have undergone a total of 70 inspections, resulting in 25 out of service orders. This is 35.7% out of service rate is significantly higher than the national average of 20.72%. And a truck driver, a Texas truck driver admits to fleeing a checkpoint with 63 people hidden inside of his trailer.
Federal authorities say that a Texas-based truck driver was, has pled guilty to charges related to human smuggling. 30-year-old uh, no, Mr. Navarro has pled guilty to a charge of conspiracy to transport aliens within the country, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office, Southern District of Texas. Authorities say that back in January, Navarro was driving a semi-truck through the Laredo North Border Checkpoint on I-35 when a canine unit alerted to the presence of contraband in the trailer. Navarro was uh, reportedly unable to provide a, a bill of lading for the freight he was supposed to be transporting and he was referred to secondary inspection. Authorities say that rather than comply, Navarro increased his speed and drove through the fence and into a field before he ultimately crashed. He attempted to flee on foot but was quickly apprehended. Authorities discovered 63 people hidden inside the trailer. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt during the crash through the fence and attempt to flee. Navarro will be sentenced at a later date and faces up to 10 years in prison. And truck drivers say they won't deliver to cities with defunded police departments. As cities across the country are discussing defunding or disbanding their police departments, some truck drivers are voicing concerns with safety. I don't know where they get this summary from. I believe this news outlet that I get my news from did their own survey. So if you aren't on their app, which I'm not going to say who it is, but, you know, they never asked me. I don't get on their app. So 70, according to their survey, 77% of the people that answered their survey questions say they will refuse to deliver freight to cities with defunded police departments. Okay. So let me clarify that because that's not what it says in their article, but you know, I'm clarifying it that if you answered their survey on their app, that's the 77%. It's not all truck drivers because there ain't no way 4 million of us answered their survey. Truck driving is historically ranked as one of the most dangerous jobs in the country in 2018, as I reported by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Truck driving is the most deadly job. Truck drivers spent the last year on the front line of this uh, virus and protest. Now many are fearful of what might happen if pol police depart or disband or are defunded. Truck drivers have been voicing their concerns. After reading about their concerns, they uh, this news outlet posted a poll. They asked uh, drivers, would you pick up or deliver to cities with refunded, uh, defunded or disbanded police departments? Why or why not? 77% uh, of the drivers that took that poll said they would not. So here are some of their responses. If something was to happen, you have to take matters into your own hands and then you risk being prosecuted for protecting yourself. Another one said, this is not an area you need to act fearless and you think you'd look like a fool for saying no. Imagine what kind of fool you'd look like for driving to a hot spot and putting your life in danger. Another one said, I will not deliver to an area with a disbanded police department. My life matters and I do this for my family. We are already at the mercy of these towns and cities with laws that hate us and are against us for parking and getting a meal or even using the restroom. Another one said, simple, we may not like it all the time, but law and order is necessary. Another one said, most places we go already can be dicey and about the only time you see a cop is when the lights are on behind you. So um, that's what some truck drivers think in our industry. And our next story is a state's rest areas that allowed, gave out food permit or um, permits to food trucks, I mean, they will not be renewed since everything is starting to open up. Idaho, like many other states, allowed food trucks to sell food at rest areas to help feed truck drivers while truck stop restaurants were shut down. Now the state has entered stage four of this virus plan and the state has announced it will discontinue the rest area food truck program as of June 12th. Quote, more than 30 permits have been granted since we developed a provisional program, said the Idaho Transportation Department. 
mobility services engineer. Now that hot meals on the road will be easier to find, those permits will expire so that they may be in compliance with federal rules and they will not reinstate them. And we think it's a big farce, but apparently it's not. DOT is giving out $4.4 million in funding for self-driving project to Ohio for a project on Interstate 70. The U.S. Department of Transportation, USDOT, has awarded Ohio with a multi-million dollar grant to fund large-scale automated truck projects. On June 12th, the Ohio Department of Transportation announced that they had been awarded a $4.4 million grant for their I-70 truck automation corridor project. Officials say that the I-70 truck automation corridor project will involve, quote, deploying smart logistics solutions along a stretch of I-70 between Columbus, Ohio and Indianapolis, Indiana as part of a four-year testing project. Ohio DOT says that trucking companies and truck automation vendors will be allowed to deploy partially autonomous trucks on I-70 in daily operations. A human driver will be in the cab in case intervention is necessary. Damn well better be! The I-70 truck automation corridor project is facilitated by a partnership between the Ohio DOT, Drive Ohio, Indiana DOT, and Transportation Research Center as well as other technology providers, truck manufacturers, regional logistics councils, and private freight companies. Ohio DOT says partners contributed $4.4 million in matching funds to provide a total for this project at $8.9 million. So they are planning on doing it for three years between Columbus and Indiana, my main corridor that I always travel. And they're also doing one on US 33 as well outside of Columbus. And remember the NFL player that um, knocked the hell out of a couple of drivers, Mr. Antonio Brown? Well, he's back in the news. The former NFL player gets off with only two years probation. Of course he did. When you have the money, you'll get away with everything. Former NFL player Antonio Brown has received a two-year probation sentence after pleading no contest in his truck driver battery case that was held on June 12th of this year. By pleading no contest, Brown is accepting punishment without formally admitting guilt. In other words, he wasn't guilty, so all he's going to get is... Um, He's not going to have a felony on his record, but he has faced multiple charges of including burglary, battery, and criminal mischief, and he won't receive any jail time. He has been ordered to undergo a psychological evaluation, a 13-week anger management course, to stay away from both of the victims, both of the drivers, must also complete 100 hours of community service, he is still allowed to travel nationwide for work under the terms of his probation. See what happens when you get have money. And a trucking school owner is sentenced for selling CDLs to unqualified drivers. Back on June 12th, 56-year-old Mr. Mengat was sentenced to 14 months in prison and a $10,000 fine after he was convicted on a charge of unlawful production of an identification document aiding and abetting according to the U.S. Attorney's Office of California. The court also ordered the forfeiture of the $100,000 that had been earned through this scheme. Authorities say that Mangat operated a truck driver training school in Bakersfield. As part of the scheme, whenever a student struggled to pass the DMV test, Mangat would allegedly offer to help the student fraudulently procure a CDL in exchange for more money. The scheme was accomplished with the help from Mangat's contact 56-year-old Javier Jesus Hernandez Herrera, a former DMV employee. And Herrera pled guilty back in November, like I talked about, and faces up to 15 years and a $250,000 fine. He'll be sentenced in August of 2020. Excuse me. And if you want to know if you can, what states you can legally carry, conceal and carry, in this article, there is an interactive United States map 
I'd say I had a concealed carry permit in Mississippi, which states also let me take that, you know, take my weapon into their states and like a reciprocity thing. Don't assume you're legally carrying a firearm if you're licensed in your state. Some states won't honor your conceal and carry permit. We all know how dangerous it could be out here, and many of you said you carry a gun for protection, understandably so. Which state will honor your permit and which will not? U.S. Carry offers an interactive map that I'll have a link in the show notes on in the show notes in the description in this under this video. Click on the map to find out which states will honor your permit and which ones will not. And the FMCSA gives truck drivers with expiring licenses and medical cards room to breathe. I also spoke about this in episode 87 and 88. The FMCSA will once again extend a waiver giving truck drivers with expiring license some extra time to renew till September 20th, I believe. September 30th. Um, that's for the CDL validity the and the permit holders and also your medical cards. So I'm not going to discuss that very long because this um, show is long enough. And our last article is an unattended tractor trailer plows into the Gardner Webb dorm room as a driver is getting his breakfast. On the morning of June 15th, a tractor trailer rolled downhill, crashing into a dorm building at Gardner Webb University in North Carolina. That incident occurred while the Case Farm truck truck driver was getting breakfast at a Hardee's restaurant near the dorm building around 8 in the morning. While inside the restaurant, the parking brake either did not engage or malfunctioned, causing the truck to roll downhill. The truck crashed through the walls of the Spangler Hall and came to a halt inside a dorm room. The crash also caused 70 to 80 gallons of diesel fuel to spill. Emergency crews and hazmat crews responded to the scene. Luckily, nobody was in the building or the truck when the incident occurred and no injuries were reported. I also want to take a moment and this is even though this is coming out the end of June I want to take a moment and wish my youngest son a very happy birthday um, his birthday was June 15th he is in the Air Force and he is stationed overseas so happy birthday to you son I hope you had a good birthday if you enjoy my show and would like to support me the links to do so are in the description below Please subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Um, it's free to subscribe, even though it doesn't mean a membership. Completely free to subscribe. This way you'll know when I upload a new video. I greatly, greatly appreciate all of you who tune in each and every week to watch me here on YouTube or on BitChute. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. If you'd like to check out the bottom of every podcast episode on juliastruckercafe.com, you'll be able to find where else I'm at, like iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, uh, the BitChute link. Please like us on Facebook. And don't forget to join our discussion group at Julia's Trucker Cafe Regulars. On the website, I also share recipes. And I have a page of stupid crap that drivers do. And don't forget to check out our cafe store. I keep forgetting to talk about that. We also have a cafe store with t-shirts, hats, and sweatshirts, hoodies, a lot of different items. So if you're looking for presents for your trucker, mom or dad, please check out our cafe store at our website at juliastruckercafe.com. Before I forget, please feel free to leave a comment. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the episode. I read each and every one. I also, if you have an idea for an upcoming uh, episode, please feel free to email me at info at juliastruckatcafe.com. Now in July, I'm going to be having free giveaways, and here shortly, I will be doing a video to let you know how you can get something free between a coffee cup, maybe a first aid kit, Amazon gift card, who knows, 
don't know but starting July I will have free giveaways so please stay tuned I hope all of you have a great weekend and until next time keep the shiny side up You have been listening to Julia's Truckin' Cafe Truckin' News Hour. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Take care. Have a blessed day.